What's the deal, y'all? This your man King here at the Media Assassin coming at y'all with another video. And I want to talk about how Meek Mill has never recovered from that Drake battle. I don't know y'all looking at me like, yo, King, you bugging. Let me break y'all down to this here. Go back to about the 2010s. Well, we had the We Are the World movement. We talk about DJ Khaled's, We the Best. We talk about Rick Ross, MMG. We talk about Young Money. We talk about good music. Everybody was just collabing and making music together. We was over beefing at this point. The Obama era niggas wasn't really trying to beef like that. So, everybody was basically doing collabs. And Meek Mill, I think, signed on the MMG around 2013. I could be wrong. About 2013 or 2014, I believe. Maybe later than Maybe earlier than that. Maybe I think 2011. I could be wrong. But anyways, before the beef, Meek Mill was seen as a fly young Philly dude getting money. He had anthems. Like, I'm talking about I'm a boss, dreams and nightmares, house party, best believe. Young and I'm getting it. Don't panic. No dream chaser takes what had not. Because see, what I liked about Meek was Meek had good energy to match that production. And not to mention he also had a battle. He had a rep as a battle rapper. Then he clashed with Cassidy. He held his own against Cassidy. Which was actually entertaining. That was one of the best battles of 2010s. Then his stock started to rise a little more. He bagged one of the baddest joints in the game, Nicki Minaj. You couldn't, you couldn't um go no higher than that in terms of stock. So at this point of the game, he had the hit records. Dreams, Dreams and Nightmares is pretty much a hit to this day. It's a Philly anthem to this day. He brought the motorcycle culture into that back into it, even though it was already there. I remember Irv Gotti saying when he first heard I'm a Boss, it reminded him of that Rough Rider sound. And that's the energy that Meek brought. Now, he drops his second album, Dreams Worth More Than Money. And everything seemed to go right. He had a Drake feature. It was going to do numbers. Everything was well in hip hop until one day he turned to Tweet Mill. And all of a sudden, just started spazzing. He started going off on Drake because Drake didn't retweet his album. Then he went ahead and broke the fourth wall and said Drake had Ghost Riders. Now, keep in mind, Drake at this time was groomed. These claims were damaging because Drake was getting groomed by the industry as the next golden goose of hip hop. They had already pedestalized him as one of the greats already. They, had, they already was in line of doing that. They had him do songs with Eminem, Jay-Z. They had him on Sprite commercials. I mean, Sprite, Sprite commercials. He was on doing songs with Mary J. Blige. I was even thinking to myself, how the hell is this guy coming out of nowhere and he's getting all these major features? But I digress on that. He even had the poster with Biggie, Nas, and Rakim, I believe. It was a Spike poster. So they were pedestalizing Drake as the next GOAT. And these allegations were damning. So to protect the Golden Goose, all these corporations and, and industry peers... They ganged up on Meek Mill heavily, made him a punching line. Even though back to back, that was probably one of the most overrated diss records I ever heard. But the industry gassed it up to be bigger and greater than it really was. But it worked for that time period because Meek, number one, was not strategic. He was at rational and emotional. Drake, on the other hand, he showed that he finally had a he had a backbone after being a punching bag to many. He was a punching bag to many hip hop pursuits. So people looked at it like, oh, Drake getting in the ring. Twitter fingers turn to trigger fingers. You getting bodied by a singing nigga. And fought back. And then what followed it was this. 
You had Burger King making memes about it. You had Coca-Cola making memes about it. You had wrestlers. You had Brett the Hitman Hart chiming in about it. This thing was major. What is happening to Drake now that what Kendrick Lamar was doing, it was done to be mixed. The same way the memes, social media, content creators, the industry, they all put their, they had their footprints in Meat Mill's neck. And after that, he turned into a laughing stock. He never recovered to this day. To this very day, he's seen as a laughing stock within the hip hop culture. They, they always say Meat gonna take an L today. Meat gonna take an L today. And then not to mention, even when he tweets, it, it seems like he's scatterbrained everywhere. He's not making sense. He's not really been seen as that fly dude from Philly no more. He's been resorted to a punchline. The Diddy rumors. Me, me, I mean, the Nicki Minaj situation. The nigga had to literally t- do a prison stint to, re- to, to, to um, reestablish his identity. And even that looked bad. But then he did the bunny hopping. So... He never recovered from that. And I can, you, you can even make an argument and say Drake has it because those Ghost Rider, those Ghost Rider um, allegations hung over his head to this day. So, even though Drake, he has the luxury of being the pop, of, you know, going into the pop lane, Meek Mill pretty much don't. Then he got into the battle with Game. And even though Game started that under a lie, the perception was game crushed him. So, at this point, he's seen as a laughing stock right now. And that all stems from that beef. Even though they squash it now, it's not the same. But, am I bugging? Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Subscribe to the like button, please.